Welcome once again to Art for the Ageless. And today we are going to discuss soft pastels. Before we do, I notice that some people have done homework. Thank you so much. We left you with the oil pastels last session and half done. So would you kindly hold up, if anybody brought a picture from last term, Hold up and show me what you have completed. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Let's give our homework doer a big hand. And uh, Je Janet, oh, this is Jane. No, I'm sorry. I'm Pat. You're Pat. And that's Jane. Here we go again. Jane showed me her smartphone. Not Janet, but mine's on my phone. <laughs> I didn't bring it in my video. It'll take too much time. Credit for homework <laughs> given, absolute credit. On, on your tables, you'll find a survey, uh, and it is for your certificates of completion, which we will hand out next week. So would you kindly take the time to print your name clearly and to check off the classes you attended uh, this session and last session also. Thank you very much. I see everybody's busy. OK, now, uh, this session on oil pastels is going to cover uh, similar to what we did last week, but in a different medium. I'm going to teach you a few techniques of uh, applying the soft pastels, and then we will go into different projects. If you will notice, in the center of the table is what I call cheap chalk. OK, this is schoolroom chalk. So I want you to pick up the pieces. And to, there's a black piece of paper on your table. And to just experiment a little bit. Let me just get rid of this on what happens when you're using cheap materials. When I took these out of the box, of course, they all came out in crumbles, because that's what happens uh, in school chalk. So I don't want you to get uh, upset when you start using these, uh, this chalk. It is dirty, and that is why you also see a bowl of water in front of you with a sponge. And a, just a teeny bit of detergent has been added to it. And that is for your fingers if you start to get upset. Your fingers are going to get very dirty. And you're going to want to do it several times, but don't. Wait until the very end uh, when you're just totally covered in dust, then wash. And then, of course, if you need additional cleansing, uh, there is the restroom. So you'll notice that I, this is a new box. It's broken already. And this is what happens to your materials. So if you will, just take one or two pieces and scrub it along your paper. And you know, that's, that's a pretty color. OK, yes. We have a few pretty colors. Just experiment just for a moment uh, so that you see how it gets all over your hands and it comes off very easily. Now, these colors don't seem too bad, but in comparison to the more expensive ones who have more pigment, richer pigment, uh, you will see that these are a disappointment. This is OK for kids, all right? But not for us. We want better than this. So just experiment for a while so that you get the feel. I say, oh, I don't like that. I'm dying to put my hands in the water, but she said not to. There we go, a little blue. Just kind of dab at them so that you're used to their. It come off easily. They are made, of course, with pigment, and uh, some are made with clay, kaolin, uh, gum, resin. There's about six colors. And so you might say, oh, well, those are OK. OK. All right, now, now we're going to compare. Uh, in front of you uh, is a box with the real soft pastels. 
So if you want to take this chalk and either push it to one side or just leave it there, uh, I would like you to now open the box that's in front of you and take out the real soft pastels. They have been professionally made and not for school. This kind of chalk uh, from the school, of course, this is what our teachers used to color on the blackboard, make pretty flowers and things like that near our honor roll. I don't know if any of you remember that. Yeah, she would just kind of decorate it and then your name would be down there and you'd be so happy. Okay. Then she'd let you decorate it. Okay. Now, this is my set of pastels. Uh, and yours are just about the same. Some of yours are even better, and there's a greater variety. They come in sets of 12, 36, 48. And of course, when you take them out, you say, well, why are yours broken? Well, they break anyway. You just touch them. Everything breaks. So what do you do? You either let it break unevenly, where you get a little shorty stub and a long one, which is unsatisfactory, or you take the ultimate sacrifice. You break them yourself. Because if you break them yourself, you can break them in a perfect half. And so that's what I did to your whole set of 48 different pastels. I broke every one of them up in half deliberately. There's enough there in the box if you put them out uh, onto the, uh, the sheet. And you can let them mix with the other pastels because now you know the difference. Uh, so empty them out onto the toweling and look at them. Okay, I'll give you a minute to do that. Now, each one of you do not have the exact same color because there are just too many different colors. Uh, I started off with a purple, so I'm simply going to find a purple from my list of pastels. And I'm going to put it next to it, just very slightly. In fact, I'm going to put it so that I halfway uh, have it on top. You can see, as everybody found a sort of a purple, please share back and forth. You'll see how much deeper the pigment in is and how much more brilliant. Okay, there's the red. Okay, this is going to be a surprise. Put the red. And there are varying shades of red right next to it. Can you see how much more brilliant that is? Let's do that. OK, the, the yellow. As you can see, much more brilliant. The blue. I am going to just spill this. because Let it go. Okay, the blue here, brilliant. The orange. So just experiment now and look at how much better that is. Beautiful. Just exciting. All right, we need to get into it. So I'm just going to show you a few techniques. All right, I'm going to turn the paper on its back because I need the space. So let's turn it on its back and turn it horizontal. The first one to show you, take any one you want. I think I'll take the orange. And if you hold it on its corner, I want you to see how you can get a sharp line, okay? So let's do this for a little bit. Then, if you take it so that it is on its side, you can get a thicker line. If you hold it broadside and draw it down, you can get this. So up here, Fine line, thicker line, broadside. All right, let's do a broadside one more time. 
Take a different color. I'm going to take yellow. And I'm going to draw it over it. Now you're seeing more brilliance. And this is how we're going to do our sunflowers today. We're going to teach you how to layer. And there's two ways of layering. You have before you a Q-tip. Please pick up your Q-tip. I want you to do two things. I want you to take your finger and on half of the sample, run your finger over it. You are doing what is called blending. They do have blending sticks. Uh, they are professional blending sticks, but a Q-tip works just as well. So now let's blend with the Q-tip. It's not as satisfactory because now you're blending the color away. So I don't like that at all. I think the beauty of this uh, particular medium is seeing the product. So if I was doing it, I would just put it right back there. All right, we're going to go to the last one, which is cross hatching. And a cross hatch is like a weave, OK? It's going to go back and forth. So let's start by broadsiding with the orange and do a big one, and then cross it. This is like weaving uh, linen or cotton. So let's take another one. Let's try a yellow. And this time, you're going to do the fine line, and you're going to go this way quickly. And then you're going to go this way. Then you can go this way, and you can go this way. And in doing all that, you can also add another color. So let's add another color. And you don't have to hit it down the same way each time. You can hit it softly, and you can hit it with more force until you get something that actually resembles a piece of cloth. OK, we've gone into 15 minutes, so I think it's time we get to our sunflower, OK? Because if we can finish this, I do have a final project for you for today that you might enjoy. All right, so let's put this to one side. Uh, there are colored pencils on your table that will show up on the black construction paper. So look for those. Please keep your name on all your work. And yes, please do take it home. The colors are for our name. Also. Okay, question? No, okay. We have one colored pencil. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. You said for our name? Well, the regular lead pencil was for the survey. Oh. And the colored pencil is to use on the black construction paper, uh, which will show up better. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, we're going to start today with your project. Is there anyone who does not have their glue project in front of them? Everybody's OK, great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. OK, very good. So we're going to start with the center, and the center is black. So please find your black pastel. And let's color it in. The reason why I gave you that glue is to establish boundaries and limits first. OK. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly black, does it? Take, take a blue, if you have a dark blue or a dark green, and you want to use that instead, be welcome. Always remember that all the colors blend into each other beautifully. Uh, Here is the original one that I had done uh, for the class, and the center is black. The next one is yellow. So take your yellow, and let's go around the center with the yellow. 
What the only thing stopping you is going to be the glue, and that's okay. The next layer, of course, was orange. So we're going to go around the yellow with the orange. Everybody see what I'm doing here? We're trying to make it deeper and deeper and more intense. When you do pastels, work in little short scratches, okay? Because you want to lay that pigment down in a very direct and powerful manner. And of course, again, that glue stops you. Our next layer, going to the outer shell, is the brown of the center of the sunflower, which is the seeds, which are the seeds. And so take your brown, but have orange in hand, okay? So take your brown, and we're going to go around in little short strokes. Another method that we said you could use was to do the broadside, blend it with your Q-tip, and then hit over it with the short strokes, because that way you can cover more ground. So again, take your broadside, broadside it around, broadside it, hit it. Find another color to use. Your choice, you can do any color you want. I'm gonna take the purple and I'm gonna hit the brown with the purple. You can barely see it, but it's providing detail. Just hit it. Then I'm gonna take some red, and I'm gonna go into it again with the red. Incidentally, there's another technique we use where we put more emphasis on a color on one side and less emphasis on the other side, and then contrast it by bringing the colors through the painting. So, over here you'll notice that I, I made the seeds a little bit lighter here and a little darker here. This is for people with the glue. But those of you who don't have the glue boundaries, uh, you are free to do, of course, whatever you want, but try to stay in that separating boundary. I'm going to put a little bit, let's see, I'm going to put a little bit more yellow in here. So if I take these little peck things, little pecky, I can very easily provide more detail. So let's peck at that for a while. Get some more detail. Right. How are we doing? If you want to use the school chalk also, uh, you're perfectly welcome to add that to your picture. So you have a variety of things. You have the school chalk, you have the professional pastels. Raise your hand if we're ready to get into petals. <laughs> Two, wonderful. Okay, we have practically a full class today, so I'm Really happy that you all showed up today. Just makes it a lot more fun. Okay, let's get brighter. Let's get brighter. Let's get those professional pastels and let's lay them on heavy, all right? So I'm urging every one of you to just force, even in the brown, I'm gonna force some orange. Okay, I'm gonna go into the petals now. And just to start you off, we're gonna broadside some of the petals, okay? So I'm gonna broadside this one. Where you see my chalk marks, I was not able to do the glue, okay? So I made these, this fake thing here. All right, so I'm gonna broadside the petals. So just go around and broadside them because I want you to get a sense of fulfillment. 
right away. We can always go over everything. So just broadside it. You might see as I just broadsided this section, funny little marks that look like corrugated cardboard. That's because this will pick up the impression underneath it. Fun, fun, okay. So I can broadside, I did these last night, but I can broadside them if I want to. All right, so let's just broadside everything. There we go. Fill it in, just get a sense of where that glue is, where those boundaries and limitations are. Over here, this is a petal underneath a petal. Maybe this is a petal. This turned out to be a leaf. You can do whatever you want. I think I'll make that into, nope, I don't want to do that. There, broadside everything. Just cover your entire picture with your yellow broadsiding it all the way through. If you want to decide on some of the leaves, then choose where you want the leaves on the outskirts and broadside them. All right, so we just want to get all of this. We want to cover as much as possible. There's uh, two schools of philosophy on art composition. One school says, focus on just one thing, work it to death, and then move on. I don't uh, apply my philosophy to that. Rather, I feel that what Leonardo da Vinci said was most accurate complete in every level first. So this to me is level one. And now I will move to level two. I can see it better. Okay, level two, I'm going to take another color. I'm going to take uh, a little orange and I'm going to start to fuss with it very lightly. I am using now not the broad side, not the, the point, but the flat side, and I am striking it. Let's see which one. It would be this one here. I am striking it, but only on half of the petal. Why on just the half? Because I want to get more variety. Okay. So striking, striking. Another thing that I know you realize I'm doing is I'm trying to have you work quickly. Why? Because it's more satisfactory to work quickly so that you can see things being brought up. Next thing I have to decide, where do I want a petal that is dying? Okay, so I'm gonna take my brown, I'm gonna look around, and of course, I have chosen this one. So using this stroke, not the broad side, not the point, but uh, what shall I call this? This is broad side, this is point. Oh, flat side, call it that. I'm going to do it brown and darker on one side than the other because I want the petal to show shading. I want it to show that it is withering. Most of the flowers that Van Gogh did on the Sunflower series did have that underlying uh, aspect of death. But it seemed it was a beauty in death. And so we are giving it a little more depth by taking the brown and putting it on the bottom side or one side of each of the petals and bringing it down sharply to the point. So let's try that. Just trying to get more depth. 
And we're working not just on one petal. We are working all around our drawing quickly. We are focused. And we might even decide to do one a little darker than the rest. We might even decide to just totally cause it to fade out. Right. Now, of course, this picture looks different from this picture because I have done more little uh, scratchy marks, small strikes. So what shall I do with this next? I've used my brown. I know what. I want some highlights. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do my scratch technique. And I'm going to go over the orange. And I'm going to try to blot out some of that black. And I'm going to bear down heavy. I especially want this yellow to come out where the black is, OK? Because the contrast between light and dark is very important and very exciting. So I'm just going to take this and I am going to strike it right at the heart near the seeds. And I think I will do my little scratchy marks all over, just maybe not uniformly, but just give a little bit to each one. Let's see how we're doing with our time. We're getting close. I would like to know how you are doing. The only way I can is if you, if you will bravely hold up your picture and let me see. Oh, I love it. Oh. Oh, they're so beautiful. I wish Ted had stayed and taken photographs. Sean, is there any way that we can, in, in about five minutes, uh, maybe uh, look at these? OK. OK. Uh, let's continue going around, because I see I have a lot of light here. I'm going to continue going around here with my little scratchy yellow marks. OK, Sean is coming around. And we hope that you will all accept his invitation to photograph your, uh, your work. So that would be very generous of you if you could do that. And I want you all to please get that orange, get that yellow, and just smack it down, OK? Just be very vigorous, all right? That's what we like. If you want to show me your work. Here we go. Up they go. Beautiful. Oh, thank you so much for doing that, Sean. Beverly, are you, did you did we get Beverly? Did you hold it up, Beverly? Okay. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I'm so glad you came today, Pam. I hope you'll come next time. I hope so. my girlfriend's online, so I hope she saw my face. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an invitation to return? <laughs> okay. Did we get the other side of the room too, Sean? Oh, oh, come on. I want to see the other side of the room. We won't force you. Yes, we will. <laughs> we will get you. OK, since uh, mostly from that side, could, we, could I see this side of the room again? Shy, they're shy. That's all. I thank you very much for doing that. Sean Hidalgo, our cameraman today. Absolutely. I want to see. I want to see. Oh, it's getting, it's getting close. All right. 
We're almost finished. Uh, let's go into our leaf. I'm just trying to do it quickly. Yes. Oh. Faster, faster. Because no, you're not taking the pastel self. Forget it. <laughs> you are going to go online and you are going to buy a small box of pastels. Okay. See, you don't mind your fingers getting all messed up. I love you. All right, let's, uh, let's take our dark green and let's go under the leaf. Let's just kind of sneak, I mean, sneak under the petal and do a nice dark green. Sneak in there. Nice and dark. Get rid of those, uh, well, Pam and I are the only ones that have the little white chalky marks, but get, get, rid, of, get rid of those if you want to. I'm so glad that I made that extra one. Get rid of the chalky lines. Yeah, what it is, it was the glue. It was glue, everybody else had right. glue. So it's okay to get rid of the chalky lines? Oh, yes, yes. Oh. Okay, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm happy enough with what I've finished, uh, enough to move on. Uh, no, it doesn't look just like that one. Why should it? Because I'm doing an adaptation of my <laughs> adaptation. We all discussed that. You're not really copying somebody. Uh, this is my adaptation of, of Van Gogh's 12 Sunflowers, and of course this is my adaptation of what I did. I never do anything the same twice. It's impossible, absolutely impossible. Right. Something's always changed, your feeling, uh, the way you are evolving uh, with the media. Uh, you know how to use it better the next time. And that's exactly what I want to emphasize with you all, that every time you do something, you are getting better because your brain is learning how to manipulate the materials. And the more, and the more variety of materials you use, the more you will realize this. All right. Uh, I see that you have not completely finished and I'm going to break down and tell you, okay, <clears throat> if you want to borrow the chalk pastels, you may, but please return them. Please return them next week. How many feel that they would like to uh, finish at home, do experimentation? Oh, there we go, okay. All right, so for that favor, hold up your pictures. I want to see, I want to see everybody's. Oh, they are gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. They are just fantastic. Look, okay, hold them up high. Share with everyone in the class. They look like a beautiful field of sunflowers. Okay. And now when you put your, paint, your pictures down, I want you to give a big, big round of applause for each other. Give each other some love. Okay, Sh Sharon, they did a beautiful job. Sharon is our volunteer back there and, and she helped put out all the materials. Thank you so much, Sharon. <laughs> okay, so now we are heading into our final project and uh, we are going to, of course, uh, use only the good pastels. Uh, let us observe now. The, uh, Sharon, at this point, we're going to give them uh, a piece of brown paper. Uh, not the, I don't have any blue prepared. But we're going to give you the brown paper, and we're going to show you uh, some uh, of the uh, technique, which I called uh, free geometric shapes in space. You may continue working on your pastels until everything is passed out. Uh, what I'm going to be giving you, 
just to sample, uh, is a short piece of paper. And I'm going to be giving you some cut shapes of paper. Oh, I'm sorry, I just hit the mic. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited we're getting into the second project. Okay. Uh, I might give you a triangle. I might give you uh, rectangles. So we're just going to get a whole bunch of shapes uh, on the table. And, okay, everybody got their, their small. That's a good idea. Pamela's putting hers her uh, pastel under the chair, which is something I do remember doing in school. Uh, so that there's, uh, I invite you to do the same uh, or find a place uh, for it. Okay, so uh, everyone will get several shapes and we will start. Okay, I'm gonna show you the technique as long as we're going. Okay, what you're gonna do when you get the small piece is you're going to lay it down any way you want on the brown paper. Then you're going to take a piece of pastel, you're going to hold the paper firmly, and you're going to strike it from the paper to the brown construction paper this way. You can take it on the side or the point. This is my side, this is my point. It doesn't make any difference how you do it. You're going to take several different shades and strike them. You can strike them as short as you want or as long. This is where you're going to start to get very messy. And you're just going to strike, 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 strike. And, whoopsie. Okay. And let's see what else I can do. I'll do this one. I, can, I will go over them, under them, around them. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to turn it a different way. You can, again, use the triangle if you have one or the rectangle and strike it. I think I'd like to get a little bit darker. I'm going to use this. Now, of course, your pieces are going to get very messed up, but that's okay. Absolutely fine. Get as messed up as you want to. I'm going to take different, different colors. So what's happening is I'm crossing them. So let me show you over here again. These are the papers that I use. As you can see, they're all very messed up. And I would do the side of one of them, then I would turn it and place it in a different place on the paper, and I would go on that way doing it. So does everybody have the little pieces of paper? Thank you very much, Sharon. I, I know that was a hurried distribution. Okay, so now this one, maybe I'll put it over here, and I'll cr cross it here. Therefore, I am making shapes that are crossing each other, intersecting with each other, dominating each other in any which way I want to. I can blend it or strike it any way. This also gives me an opportunity to do the weaving. In other words, I can take this shape and I can broadside it like this and then I can take another color and I can weave another color over it and crisscross it like that. So what I am getting is a pattern that might resemble, again, some linen cloth. So, okay. So how are we doing with our sampling? <laughs> Okay. Now we are going to get into a larger area. The very, uh, the very first picture I had here, I had done it on a white background.
this one. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. It was done on a white background. It showed the different shapes crossing each other, uh, the interrelation of the shapes. Uh, then I would take and I would weave in certain areas, not doing it all in an even fashion, but distributing the color throughout. This is when we get into what is called composition. And I have told you this before, you don't put all one color on one side of the paper and leave the other side blank. You've got to distribute it. This is also what da Vinci is talking about. When you bring something up in a composition, you do it all over level one, level two, level three, until you get the final product. All right, so and now Sharon, thank you very much, is distributing the larger brown paper. Uh, you're going to take the colored pencil and put your name on the paper. You can hold it this way or you can hold it this way. Your choice. Okay. I'm going to hold mine this horizontally this time. I did it vertically last time. Using the same techniques, taking as many shapes as you want, coloring wherever you choose, you are going to make a lovely composition with your soft pastels. And we have a full, I'm so excited, we have a full 15 minutes to do this, so it's enough that we'll do it slowly and carefully. Let us take our first shape. Place it wherever you want. I'm going to try placing mine in the middle. And uh, if there are any larger shapes, then that would, you could start with those. All right, so here we go. Another technique is if you want to have it closer to the line, then take your Q-tip and, or you, well, you know what, that Q-tip kind of takes the whole thing off. So what I would do is I would take my little finger, let me take a, a darker color. You want to get it as close to the line as possible. All right, so if I take my finger and I kind of push the pigment into it, then I'm getting a sharper line. Probably tell with, better with a lighter color. All right, let's do that again. Okay, there, that's better. So you get a, a sharper line uh, with that. All right, so I'm gonna cross it over. I decide I'm gonna do this here. And so I can do it this way. I can go all the way up here and cross it here. I can use the same color or I can stop midstream and just pick up a different color. Again, you can broadside it. You can longer than the other one. There we go. You can put some black in it over the light. It usually goes very well over the light. And mix it up so that you are getting distinct marks. So we're just gonna continue like that. As you're doing it, you're getting familiar with your media. At this point, not many of you have complained about your fingers getting dirty. So I'm very glad. This is what it's all about, getting into it. Just When you get into it like this, you will notice, or maybe you won't, everything else disappears, everything. This is your world, You're doing what you want. You don't need that TV story. 
shut off the radio, shut off the TV, shut everything off, and just enjoy the colors, enjoy the shapes. Enjoy your creation and your ability to create, which all of you have innate in your nature. So we're making our shapes here. And just use as many colors as you want. If you want to broadside it, overdo it, weave it, color it in. Become unhappy, strike it. Basically, you're communicating with something that is within you. And as you strike each one, you are creating a part of yourself onto a surface. And this is what it's all about, passing it on. We all have grandchildren, or hopefully. And if you don't mind them getting into this, pass on the lessons that you are being taught to your grandchildren. That would please me very much. All of the materials that we use in class are non-toxic and safe for you. If I ever felt something was going to harm you, I would not bring it anywhere near you. Uh, I was going to bring some fixative because this chalk also has a tendency to fall down on your floor, on your table, and that's why you have so much protection under you. So don't get it on your clothing, but I'll tell you, it comes off very easily. Much easier than cat fur, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> get off the table, you're smudging my work. Okay, a cat doesn't know when they've jumped on your work. They just like high places. So anyway, Well, I see I've created a place where I probably could fill in and do a little bit of texturing. So I'm going to take the chance, and I know I haven't finished, but just for the fun of it, I'm going to do a little tiny square here. I'm just going to go back and forth. And I'm going to take that square, and maybe I'll start to weave some red into it. Now there's, again, two ways. You can either take uh, the point of it and strike it like that, or you can vary the line by doing it very thinly and very uh, irregular. So now this is my irregular. I'm going to wiggle it like a little worm. One line can be straight, the other line can wiggle. The other way, same thing. If you will look at a piece of cloth, a rough cloth, you will find the same thing. Uh, it's not exact. It goes in and out. And then I'm going to cross it over. How many of you have ever tried actual uh, loom weaving with a weaving table, uh, a floor loom? OK. 
fun, real fun. Okay, nice project on a rainy afternoon in New York City, sitting in front of a floor loom and just shuttling back and forth, back and forth uh, with that thread, turning it into cloth. Again, another form of creation. And so what you're doing today is taking the soft pastel, weaving it back and forth, and making your own creation. Then you might say, oh, well, that's ugly. So what? You're learning. And the next time you go in to do a picture, you're going to remember, OK, I made a mistake. I did this, that. But now I know how to do that. And you'll keep correcting yourself until you're happy with it. OK. Well, maybe I want to make, let me make a triangle here. Experiment. Go beyond yourself. Just keep experimenting. Now, if I put red there, I know that I probably should put some red over here. And maybe I should put some red here. And if I do that, then maybe if I take this and some white and go like this, I have got a nice edge. So I'm going to try that. So your experimentation is what we're looking for. Whatever you discover is the best thing for you. Because the next set, we're going to start again, May 25th to June 29th, a whole new series. And I do hope every single one of you signs up early because the class size limit is 16. And we're going to start off with making our own magic clay dough. Well, clay dough, play dough, cloud dough, they call it on the internet. And we're going to see if we can scent it with coconut or banana or strawberry. And we're going to learn to do sculpture. And then we'll go into clay and make something nice. So each and every one of the six sessions is going to be fun. I will give you a list of what we're going to do next week, OK? So you'll know if it's something that you're interested in. Just keep trying. Just keep experimenting with every single different thing that you can. OK. Well, these are going to go home. I know they are. Right? That's OK. Again, after you've finished making all of your strikes, try to distribute your color in an even manner so that it is balanced. Oh, there's that word again, balance. <laughs> oh, that dreadful word. But I think you hopefully have a better understanding of what I mean by balance. Could you show me with a raise of your hand? How many of you understand a little more when I'm talking about balance and color? A few, OK. OK. A good start. A good start. But what do I want to see? I want to see you taking more chances. I want to see more risk taking with the uh, pastels. Uh, if you could hold up your picture one more time so I could see uh, better. Very nice. Very nice. OK. You know what? I'm going to, since Pamela is one of our new students, may I ask you to come up here and show the class? She's having a little fit for herself. Please come up, Pamela. Show the class, because this is the first time she ever came here. And I think she's done a nice job. So Our friend Kim is watching. I hope she sees me. OK, there she goes. Very nice. 
She's got some nice uh, balance coming up, and she knows exactly where to put it, and I can see it too. Can you see it, Pamela? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you for coming. Okay. Is there anyone else? You know, I think I'm going to do this because I have like a few minutes left, and we didn't do this before. Uh, if you love what you're doing now, okay, if you love your sunflower more and you want to show people uh, what you did, I'm going to move this table over and I'm going to bring you up here. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this. So we're going to do this. Get away. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask... Uh, let's say this side of the room first, to come up here uh, and show your sunflower. Uh, and if you think your other picture is finished too, bring that along in your other hand. But I especially want to see your sunflowers. So, okay, this side of the room, anyone who is brave enough, stand up. I don't care how dirty your fingers are. Stand up, oh, stop pointing at each other. Stand up. <laughs> and bring those flowers up here, okay? I'm inviting you. All right, so hesitant. Looks like I'm gonna have to go and drag everybody, but. This side of the room. Come on, this side of the room, up you. Everybody's like, Ehh. oh, stop it, come on, come on. All right, you're on, you're on. It's your time. Oh, here they come. Please announce your name because Okay, well, I wait till we get everybody up here. Here she is, okay. And oh God, I touched her. Ah! All right, here we are. Okay, we have two. Okay, let's have a third person up here now. I'm gonna step out of the Jane. way. Uh, Jane, where is she? Come on. Oh, oh, this is so nice. Okay, so we have uh, from left to right, Jane, Bev, and Janet? Pat. Pat! Ha ha, okay, see, all right, thank you. Big, big, happy hand, love, thank you. Okay, from the other side of the room, brave people, don't look at me like that, please. Okay, come up and show, please. Why is that side of the room so shy? Oh, what, why are you looking at me like that? Okay, would you please come up, yes, okay. Let's have a show of love, come on. Come on, all right. I'll, I'll, if you come up, I'll give you some photography paper. Ah, bribery, yes, I am guilty of bribery, I don't care. Come up, come up, your work is lovely. I love, oh, that is so nice, and Rose is gonna wait till another session. Okay, are you not coming up? No, no okay, okay, here we are. Gentlemen in the class, we have fine gentlemen. Helps us very much. Okay, I'm gonna stay out of the way. Uh, okay, you need to move over just a little bit more. Okay, okay, you can see yourself. Right, would you please announce your name since I'm having a lapse? Leilani. Lauren. Cliff. Great, wonderful. Let's, happy hand, love, thank you. Okay. Oh, I loved you coming up. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Okay, our time is up, is it not? And so I have to say goodbye, but I've had so much fun today. I want to thank you all very, very much. You may borrow the pastels. Yeah, again, yes, I do know where you live. You better bring them back. Okay, I'm working on a project. I really need them. Okay, so we'll see you next week. We hope we have our uh, certificates, certificates of completion ready for you and you will be photographed for the first time as the art group. So please come back, and let's give each other a lot of applause today. Thank you so much. Thank you.